so here is my drink and it has melted a bit. Oh dear. So it's a caramel popcorn frappuccino. I think it'll be okay. It still tastes good, but it is quite melted. Let me just put the ice away a second. Okay, done. Oh, it is so good. So if you follow my channel regularly, you'll know that I've like taken a month off recently from recording. So this is like my first videos back because I just felt like I'd gotten a bit stuck in my recovery and I, I wasn't really making that much progress. And yeah, I just needed a, a break really to sort my shit out and get myself back on track. And I feel like in that time I have made a bit of a kind of breakthrough and yeah, pushed past some sort of mental blocks that I've had. So I don't know if it's a bit too personal, but I was just gonna sort of share what's been going on and how that's come about. So I feel like I've kind of got to the point where I've realized I need to gain a bit more weight, which to be honest, like, People may look at me and be like, why would you want to do that? Because I might supposedly be a healthy BMI now, but like my head is still fucked, if I'm really honest. And like, I'm still completely consumed by my eating disorder and not really properly in life enough. I read a meme that was something like, if you have to restrict or exercise to stay at a certain weight, your body's not meant to be there. Which I am starting to really see in myself. Like, it doesn't matter if I'm technically a healthy BMI or if I'm getting compliments about how I look or if I can fit into a certain size pair of jeans or wear skinny jeans and a crop top or whatever. Like, my body does not give a fuck. <laughs> my body's got its own natural, biological, genetic set weight. Like, it doesn't care what skinny jeans look like or what the person over there thinks or what a freaking random curve on a BMI chart looks like. Like, my body doesn't care. And this might be some people's natural weight. Some people do naturally fall at the low end of healthy, but like, that's not me. I know it's not. And I can try all I want to like force my weight to need to be down there, but it's not natural for me. And I, yeah, I can't live a full life whilst I'm suppressing my weight like that. So I'm kind of starting to think like, I actually can't fight my, bio well, I can fight my biology, I guess. I can fight it with an eating disorder, but like, I can't think myself to be a certain weight. Yeah, my mind can't really decide what weight my body should be. And like, honestly, I have tried. <laughs> I really have tried to override my body, but it's not at its set point. And like, the fact is, if you want to suppress your weight and hold it below where your body wants it to be, you have to engage in some sort of behavior to do that because you are literally overriding all of the survival instinct in your body and all of your body's signals, which are powerful to try and get you to stay a certain weight, you're overriding them to get them to stay below that weight. So melted. So when I stopped recording about a month ago, I think I just got so stuck because I so badly wanted my body to just be happy at this low end of healthy. And it's like, you kind of hit these weight targets and you think, okay, I'm fine now. Like I actually did convince myself, like I don't even have an eating disorder anymore. I'm fine. And I sort of thought like, yay, I'm at the low end of healthy. Like let's stop here. And I don't know, I kind of went through this period of like yo-yoing a bit again, like I don't know, one week you'd like accidentally gain a bit of weight and then I'd restrict to try and control it back down and like just that backwards and forwards. And I don't know, I just sort of thought like, do I literally want to spend the rest of my life doing that? Like exercising all these controls and restrictions and planning and counting and whatever it is you need to do to hold my weight at a certain point and then just live in a constant fear of it going over that point. Like it literally is exhausting. And then a big turning point for me was probably a couple of weeks ago, I went to Starbucks and sat down to try and do some wedding planning. And like two things happened. One, I was getting overstressed, like way too stressed, just trying to plan stupid little shit. And 
You know when your brain's in like a constant state of stress and any little thing pushes you over the edge and you're always stressed out about food and weight anyway. So yeah, any little thing is like that tipping point. And two, I was finding myself so preoccupied with food and weight still that I like wasn't properly getting excited about the wedding. And it's only, well now it's about a month away, then it was probably about six or seven weeks away. And I was just like, what the fuck? This is one of the biggest things I'm ever gonna do in my life. And me, like the Meg me, would be so excited about getting married. Like I'm marrying the best person I've ever met. Like I absolutely love Brendan to pieces and I am so excited about our lives together. And then I just thought, oh my God, the eating disorder is stopping that. It's stunting or suffocating the excitement. And it's just, oh, it's literally so consuming. It takes over everything and it takes all of your like enjoyment and important things out of life and just replaces it with fucking obsessions with food and weight. So I had a real like, what the fuck are you doing moment basically. And just thinking like, who are you? Like, is this the life you want? Is this the life you want for Brendan as well? Oh, it's just, yeah, it's, it's not, that's not my values. And so please don't watch this channel and think like, oh look, she's so slim and she can still eat all this food and she's got life so sorted because it's a fucking riot in there. <laughs> Honestly, let me tell you, like, I'm laughing about it, but it's actually not funny. Like, for someone to not be able to get excited about their own wedding and not be able to plan small little details because they're too overwhelmed and preoccupied by food and weight, like, you really can't have your cake and eat it here. Like, you cannot be in life and enjoy life to the fullest and suppress your weight. Because to do that, for me, I have to use eating disorder behaviours to do it. And, like, life and an eating disorder just aren't compatible. Like, yeah, I, I honestly don't think I could do them both. Or maybe if I could, I'd give it a good go. But, like, it would be f exhausting and so shit for everyone else around. Like... Mine and Brendan's lives would literally revolve around me, my eating, when I'm gonna eat, what I can eat. I'd be in a constant state of panic that I might go over my food or over my weight target that I've set for myself. I'd probably never properly feel connected to people because you can't when you've got an eating disorder in your head. It takes so much of you that you're not properly in the world and sharing everything with everyone else. Ugh, yeah, so literally this has been my month. Like, this is what... Well, I had a couple of weeks of being like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I don't need this, I'm, I'm better, I, I can hold my weight here, blah, blah, blah. And then, I don't know, maybe just the exhaustion built up and I don't know, just with time, I'm just kind of realizing like, it's not fucking worth it to me. Like, it's literally not worth it. Is it worth the rest of my life having this skinny body that maybe I really, really want, but putting up all, with all the shit that comes with it over being in my body's healthy body <laughs> being at my set point basically which I'm not gonna lie I won't love like it's not my ideal body and I won't have that little bit of skinny to hold on to anymore but I also won't have the shit that comes along with this little body and I'll be in life and I'll be able to connect to people and not obsess over food all the time and plan my day out and fantasize over my next meal or the next thing I'm allowed to eat or stress out when friggin frappuccino melts a bit too quickly like oh mm. got a bit of popcorn on the top and I still forget that why like how shit it feels suppressing your body weight and how much better life is when you're in your body's healthy body your body's healthy body why do I keep saying that <laughs> I definitely do think though that you're never gonna want recovery 100% of the time. And I think for me, like realizing I want life and yeah, everything I'd get from being healthy more than I want a skinny body is a big thing. Thinking, suppressing my weight, like being in that skinny body is just not fucking worth it is a big thing. And also just accepting like, this is not my body's natural weight. Like, because you can spend, I honestly think people can spend years trying to force their body to be what it's not supposed to be and fighting against their biology by like restricting food, exercising, whatever eating disorder behavior it requires to hold your weight down and like, it's just shit.
for me anyway, like it's just not the life I want. So I hope that gives you a bit of a like catch up over the last month. It's quite a personal video really, you know, into my recovery and where I'm at, but hopefully it might be helpful if other people are at like a same stage or feeling that kind of stuckness or halfway house between illness and wellness. And yeah, just at that stage where you're not like ill, ill, ill anymore, your body's technically healthy maybe, but you're still living with a whole head full of eating disorder crap because I don't think it matters what your BMI is. No, it doesn't matter what your BMI is. It matters what weight your body wants to be. And you can be at a healthy BMI, a very healthy BMI, but if your body's got other ideas and it wants you at a healthier BMI, like you're gonna have to put up with an eating disorder to hold it down and to suppress your weight. Anyway, I better go. I've actually left the shopping in the car because I was so worried about this melting. I better go and get it out. And then I'm going to meet my friend in a bit to get our nails done. And then I'm going over another friend's house tonight for a takeaway and some wine, a bit of a girl's night, which is actually a perfect example of why not to think I'm so free and out and doing this and that because Brendan is out today for a kind of lads stag party thing. And I was supposed to have a hen party as well with my girlfriends. And I've had my like proper one at home with my family and friends back in March, I think we went to Liverpool, but this was one here and we were just gonna have like a small girls day today. But I don't know, I've been like getting a bit anxious and freaking out and just like the anxiety around the wedding and then the thought of like all that food and drink and I don't know, I just got really, really stressed out thinking about it this week and had to cancel it. And I sent Brendan off to his this morning and I was just like, again what the fuck are you doing like that is so not me not being able to go out with people because i'm scared about food or drink well it is me when i've got an eating disorder but like that's not what i want to be doing in life a stag and a hen party are like a bachelor and a bachelorette party if you're from the us So yeah, I guess that's just another example of how I'm still not able to completely live the life I want to live because of food and weight fears and controls and bleh, eating disorder shit. <laughs> Can't really get any more of that. Anyway, it'll still be nice tonight, like seeing my friends and stuff. And to be honest, I just want to keep going now so that like on the wedding day and well, when I post this, it'll probably be in about two weeks. And then also our lives as well, like, yeah, get myself into my body's healthy body. My body's healthy body, I've done it again. What the fuck? <laughs> get to my body's healthy weight so that I don't have to keep living under the controls and whatever of weight suppression. Okay, um, if you're new to the channel, I'm not always this personal. I feel like this has been a very personal recording. But I kind of just wanted to give an update on like what's gone on since I last properly recorded. Beyonce's come to say goodbye to everyone. <laughs> say bye. Mwah. Oh, she's a mute, by the way. Beyonce. So lots of love to everybody. Take care and I'll post again next weekend. <laughs>